Hello again and welcome back to the Fanfish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and I think this is probably going to be the first video posted to YouTube in 2020. So Happy New Year if you're watching this as the video comes out. Um, this video I'm going to be answering a question that was sent in in response to a video that I did a couple of years ago now probably about the phase switch on an acoustic guitar where I looked at this guitar here which is my uh, Turner Guitars uh, 32CE and it's got a button on there called a phase switch which you can use for controlling feedback. If you haven't uh, seen that video, I'll put a link to it in the information section down there. But I was kind of asked a follow-up question to it uh, recently, which was this. So a presenter asked me this. He says, thanks a lot for the detailed explanation. Can you please explain how notch control works and do rubber sound hole covers help anti-feedback on stage? Okay, that's a good question. So let's start off with the, the first thing that's mentioned there, namely the notch filter. If you haven't come across notch filters before, then probably the best place to start is something where you do have a frame of reference, and that's like your graphic equaliser. Now you'll have seen these in like uh, home stereo systems, or often you'll see them in guitar pedal form. And basically it's something that looks like this, and each one of those sliders gives you control over a particular frequency band. So you can boost uh, certain frequencies and cut others, and if, if the thing's in the middle it's generally like that's that's that that's unity. Anything above the above the middle line is boosting, and anything below the the line is cutting. And depending on the uh, the sophistication of the graphic equaliser, you may have uh, a number of a different number of bands. So a, a simple EQ might only have five, six, maybe seven bands. Then when you get into like studio or like home audio equipment, you get much finer control over the the different frequency bands. That you're, you're working with you might end up you know 12 you know or more uh, bands that you've got control over so if you think about a graphic equalizer you've got your know, little curves like this where you, you you're boosting the bass and the treble to give the sound some punch you've got uh, something where you might be boosting up the mid-range and it looks like this or you could have like a classic metallic uh, scooped sound where you're boosting the treble and the bass and you're really cutting out all of the mids. Now what a notch control is, is like a very um, specialised uh, graphic equaliser. Uh, where you, what you're doing is you're picking one particular frequency. In the case of using a notch filter with an acoustic guitar to control feedback, it's where there's that one frequency where the guitar will be tending to feedback so you can use the notch filter to dial in a particular frequency and cut it. So if you think about it in terms of like a, an EQ curve, it might look something like this. So in the middle there, all the, the frequency bands are just getting through unaltered apart from that one thing there, where that's the frequency where you've got a problem with feedback and you've set the notch filter, you've set the frequency of the notch filter to that frequency and you've certainly you want to cut it. So you, it's, it's literally like a it's filter. So everything gets through apart from what's being filtered out, which is that particular frequency. So as the guitar is playing, that, that problem frequency is being filtered out. And because it's like not in the sound, when it's being amplified, it's not getting back to the guitar to cause feedback. Perfectly valid way of controlling your guitar. Uh, but it does, I guess, affect the tone slightly because you're cutting a certain frequency out. But if it's a, a choice between having the true voice of your guitar but it's feeding back and it's uncontrollable versus the voice of your guitar altered slightly to take a particular frequency out but it's controllable and there's no feedback, then, yeah, the notch filter is probably the way to go. The second thing that's mentioned in that question is the idea of uh, like rubber sound hold covers. These um, like rubber discs you can get that fit in there, and the idea is that they they stop uh, they stop feedback. Now they are effective, but what you've got to remember is they are they're working because they're muffling the guitar. It's the the sound of the guitar comes from the the guitar timber vibrating, particularly the soundboard, you know, the top of the guitar. And this is where the sound comes out out of the sound hole. This is like where the guitar's the guitar's mouth, if you like. And if you think about, it, if I'm talking to you now, you can hear what I'm saying, or you can make me out roughly because I'm a Geordie and a lot of people have trouble understanding my accent apparently. But if I'm talking to you now, you can hear me nice and clearly. But if I put something over my mouth, I'm starting to sound muffled and it's not as clear. Same thing with the guitar. If you have a guitar that sounds all 
or lovely and open and then you put something in the sound hole it's going to affect the sound of the guitar it's going to sound a bit muffled again if it's a case between muffling the sound of the guitar and feeding back then you you might have to accept that compromise but it's not ideal where it is kind of acceptable is if you're not using the the acoustic sound of the guitar if you've got a guitar with a piezo pickup and that's going from the, the the output to your you know your amplifier or whatever pedals you're using and what you're playing with is purely the, uh, the pickup sound you're not worried about how the guitar sounds acoustically you know you haven't got a microphone uh, in front of it to pick up the acoustic sound then the rubber sound hole cover is is okay because it, the guitar acoustically might sound muffled but you're not using that sound you're just using the the sound from the pickup but if you're in, working in a situation where the guitar's mic'd up then the rubber sound hole cover this is probably not such a way, good way to go because it's going to make the guitar sound a bit muffled and, uh, and compromise the sound but both of the things we've discussed here the, the notch filter and the, the sound hole cover like I said, they, they are compromises, so you might be asking, well, if that's the case, why don't you just use the phase switch on the guitar, like talked about in the first video? A simple answer is, not all guitar, acoustic guitar preamps have a phase switch on them. I'm very lucky that that Turner has got one. It's the, what is it in there? It's the Fishman Isis uh, pickup system and preamp. That's got a phase switch. This guitar here, this is a Faith Mercury Classic Burst, a little parlor guitar absolutely love it i kind of got it for generally it spends a lot of time in the living room at home just like it's my playing around the house guitar but it has got some electrics in because uh, i use it in the studio now and again and it's a lovely as an acoustic guitar lovely unspo unspoiled lines there's no electrics on the outside the only controls i've got for the, the preamp are actually hidden away in the sound hole here i've got a little roller switches uh roller controls for for volume and tone uh but nothing clever like uh built-in tuners and particularly in the context of this discussion no phase switch so not all preamps have the phase switch and that's why you need to look at other ways of controlling feedback if you're going to be using a guitar like this at uh, at like stage volume or volume where feedback might become an issue notch filter i think would probably be my preferred approach if you can use one but like I say, if all else fails, the rubber sound hole cover will help to control feedback a little bit. You will, if you're playing loud enough, you can still get feedback, but uh, it's, it's something like that will help to uh, help to control it. Okay, so hopefully that answered your question. If you've got any questions you want to ask me about um, guitars, music equipment, music theory, anything at all, uh, you can go here. Fill that for me and send your question in and I'm guaranteed to see it. Uh, you can leave a comment on this video if you want, uh, but I don't always see comments left on YouTube videos. That form is a reliable way of getting in touch with me. If you like the video, please click like. If you really enjoyed it and you want to see other videos that are posted on the channel, then please click subscribe also down there. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in another video next time. Bye for now.